Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a March wrap-up and April TBR video. I cannot believe that I'm bringing TBRs back to my channel because I mentioned in a previous one that I stopped doing them because I thought that I jinxed myself and I never ended up reading what I actually put in the video. Um, so I'm putting it back in just because I'm excited to talk about these releases with you or just some books that I'm excited to read and that I'm hoping on reading. So anyway, before we get into that, if you don't notice the haircut. I cut my hair I think like two inches um, this past week and I'm super excited about it. I just think it's fresh. It's great for summer because it's going to be super hot. And then also another announcement is that I made a TikTok. I know. I can't believe I made a TikTok. I think I spent like the entire summer and just I never done a downloaded the app until I made one last night so if you'd like to follow me on TikTok where I'll be posting a lot of content as well then I'll leave the link in my description box for you to check it out but anyway let's just get started with the books that I read in March. So March was a really interesting month. I didn't get to as many books as I wanted to but I think that all the books that I am going to talk about in this video in this wrap-up except for one, were really fantastic. I want to put it out there that I read my favorite and also the worst book that I've read so far this year in this one month, which I think is really just two extreme opposites. But anyway, the first book that I read in March was The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This book was so good. I honestly feel like this month was a book for this month was a month of me just picking up books that I found out through like Instagram and through the hype and the X-Talk was definitely one of those since I've never read anything by Rachel Lynn Solomon but she is acclaimed on like the book community um but I really wanted to just read some light romance after finishing the Bone Season series the Broken Earth trilogy in February so I picked up the X-Talk and I read this after I read the third book of the Broken Earth trilogy this was just amazing it was a delightful story about these two public radio these two people who work in public radio and they decide to pretend to be exes to save their job and create this new um, radio show called the X talk where they like talk about their relationship and it's kind of like exes but friends and they talk through like what happened to the relationship um, and they bring guests on and everything it was just not just like a fluffy contemporary it was a very heartwarming read that included like family a little bit of culture um, and just it was just beautiful I really loved it I also loved how insightful it was on like the public radio and the podcasting experience like there was a lot of technical things that I think added to the story because it wasn't just the romance that was being highlighted it was about like these people's careers and just the genre or an industry of public radio which I thought was super interesting and yeah I really love this one I gave this a five out of five stars and I'm super excited to just share this book with everyone everyone because I feel like it's been talked about a lot and it's just nice to have people to talk to about this book. The next book that I read in the month of March is Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. I actually have an entire reading vlog about this book so I'm going to link it down below and I'm not going to go too much about this book like how it was but basically I picked it up on the premise that it followed two sisters who were pretty much estranged who really hadn't talked at all but they are brought together when one sister is diagnosed with uterine cancer and it just it's like earth shattering and it brings them back together where um I keep getting their names confused because their names both start with J. It's Jane and June and I keep forgetting who's who because there's actually an element in the story where there's sort of like an identity switch. They're not twins but they are sisters. Um, I would definitely recommend this book. It's super sad. It I almost cried reading this book. Um, I have ex like experience with a family member right now who has uterine cancer so reading this was just like a punch. A punch in the heart. Um, it was heartwarming, it was raw, it was gripping, it was really just hard to read it sometimes. I would recommend this book or any of Mary H.K. Choi's books if you are a character driven reader. Her characters are the most vulnerable and like messy characters you'll ever read and she's so good at writing young people. Like young people navigating this young space like and this takes place in New York City and them kind of exploring that space being a young person exploring mental health and other things this book does deal with eat with disordered eating um 
dysmorphia. Um, there's a really great uh, content warning in the beginning of the book which I thought was really really great because I didn't expect some of these topics to be touched upon and then I read this the content warning I was like okay I know what to expect. Um, so yeah overall this is just a great book. I really think this her books Mary H.K. Choi's books are so wonderful. They are YA books. This is classified as YA but I definitely think they're a lot mature and they're adding to this like maturity of the young adult genre and young adult contemporary that I think is super great that like messages for young adults reading this especially I would have appreciated this if I was like an 18 year old reading it I mean I'm only 20 but I think I would have really appreciated it if the book like this came if I read this book like when I was 18 or a teenager but anyways Yolk by Mary J. Choi gave this five stars check out my reading vlog if you're interested so the next book that I read was the worst book that I have read this year so far and I'm saying that on the basis of my rating because I gave this book like a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It was From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I want to preface this before I talk about it by saying that I am a huge Jennifer L. Armentrout fan. Um, when I started my blog, I created a Jennifer L. Armentrout project because I wanted to read all of her published works. So this is not me being a hater or because I know a lot of people love this book. I think on Goodreads it has like an average 4.3 rating which is insane um, for such a lengthy book because it's like almost over 600 pages. But anyway, I just want to preface it by saying that it wasn't the most well-written book, I would say. I think the romance element obviously took over because it is a romance book, but I also think it was confused about what it was trying to be because at the same time you have a really complex fantasy line, fantasy storyline going on in this book, not just the romance. You have the romance, which is very emphasized, but then you also have the fantasy world, the world building, the magic system. Like, it was just too much, I think, to the point where, like, you just get confused about what kind of story this is. And I just got confused about all the working parts, about how this world worked. Um, and anyways, I thought it was, the writing was a little bit redundant at times and a little bit repetitive. It was also just very cringe at times. I think there was this line in the book that I literally highlighted a million times, but it was, I let go of a breath I had been holding. And that is just like, it is, it has become a meme now, I believe, in like the book Twitter or book world. But anyway, I give this book a 2.5 stars. I think overall it was enjoyable and I enjoyed my experience reading it because I got like a laugh out of it and it was just very addicting. I didn't put it down and I finished a 600 page book in like two days so it was enjoyable but overall would I am I going to read the second book and recommend it to people probably not um but yeah and on the totally opposite end of the spectrum, I read my favorite book of the month, or my favorite book of just all time now. It is really just, it's like so good. And it is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I'm also not going to talk too much about this because one, I posted an entire reading vlog about it, which you can check out in the description box or in the little cards. And then two, this book has just been so talked, like s t people have talked about it and I don't want to sound like a broken record on like <laughs> on my video and talking about how much I love this book and why you should read it. But overall, it was a book that I picked up because of the hype and I, and I basically told myself that I wouldn't read the synopsis. So I went into this book not really knowing what it's about, but the story really surprised me. I think the main thing about this book was that I really loved and that I'll say here was that it was just consistent. It was consistent in the mood that it evoked, the writing, the just the language of it and like what kind of feelings it gave you. Like I don't, I've never read a book with that much consistency in it and I think this book does that so well and it's because of that that it gives you this wholesome like warm hug kind of vibe. So anyway, I give this a five to five stars. Obviously, it is a book that has cemented its place in my brain, in my list of all-time favorites, and I really hope you can check it out and read it because I put it off for a long time thinking that the hype wouldn't get to me, and it did, and I'm so happy that it did. Okay, moving on to the month of April, here are some books that I want to get to. The first one being America is in the Heart by Carlos Bulosan. I've already actually read half of this, so, and from the half that I read, I just had to kind of t press pause on it because it was a very hard book to read. It is a personal history of Carlos Bulosan, who is a Filipino immigrant, um, and he talks about a lot of his experience living in poverty in the Philippines and then moving to America where he faces a lot of like racism. Um, so it was just very hard to read. I had to put it down, but I want to pick it back up because um, 
I borrowed this book from my teacher. I, I usually never borrow books from people because I'm, I'm always afraid I'll never return it or I'll damage it. And I borrowed this book from my teacher and I have to return it to him because school is ending and I am moving back home to New York. So we're just, we're gonna try to finish this this month. Okay, the next books that I wanna read, can you guess what books I wanna read this month? I'll give you a hint. It's going to be a popular book to movie adaptation on Netflix. That's right, you guessed it. I'm reading Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. I actually read this twice already. I've This is gonna be my third time rereading it. Um, but anyway, I'm just, there's no really, there's no real reason for this. It's a quick read. I can get through this in probably like two sittings. And I just wanna do like a little recap before I watch the show and I wanna like take notes of things that I want to see in the show. Everyone's excited about it. Shadow and Bone coming to Netflix April 23rd, I believe. There's really no reason. Um, and then the next book that I want to read is King of Scars because I actually have never read King of Scars. Um, like I have had this book on my shelf for a few years and I've actually never picked it up but with the second book coming out, Rule of Wolves, and with the TV show, I thought it'd just be a perfect time to dive back into the Grishaverse with the characters that we love so much and give this book a fresh read. Um, it's a pretty thick book so I don't, actually not really, it's like it's like 400 pages um, but I'm excited to just get back with the characters and in this world. So the next book that I want to read is one that I was sent from publishers last month and it is Who is Maud Dixon by Alexandra Andrews. This book, the reason why I want to read it is because I read a little bit of it, like a few pages, because I wanted to see if I would like it. Um, this is pitched as a psychological thriller slash mystery, which is intriguing because if you read the synopsis, um, which it basically follows a girl named Florence who wants her, her dream is to become this celebrated, acclaimed writer. And when she gets the opportunity to become assistant for this girl named Helen who writes under the pseudonym Maud Dixon. Maud Dixon is this acclaimed celebrated writer um, aka Helen. So when Florence becomes Helen's assistant and Helen takes her on this trip to do research for her newest novel but Helen they, after an accident Helen ends up dying and Florence sees this opportunity to kind of take over the pseudonym of Maud Dixon and become the acclaimed writer that she's always wanted to be. Doesn't that just sound like intriguing and amazing and you're just like whoa how is this going to be a psychological thriller? So anyway I want to read this book find out what it's all about. Everyone who has read it already on bookstagram and have like rated it have said such great things about it so I'm excited and I have high hopes. And the final book that I want to read in April is one that I actually just got in the mail like this morning and it is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I recently saw a post on my friend Andy's bookstagram. They posted a post about like trans books with trans representation and this book um, had include some non-binary side characters. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to pick a book from that list and read about it, read a book with trans rep, and just a book that I've also seen everywhere on Bookstagram because look at the cover. When it came out, I remember everyone was talking about it and I never picked it up. So I'm excited to have it in my hands now to read it. And I think I'm gonna start with this one because I'm excited for it. I'm not gonna say the synopsis because I myself haven't looked at it and I kind of wanna go into this like book because it's a little bit of fantasy. I want to go into it not really knowing anything. So yeah, we're just going to start with this one and I'll keep you guys updated. So that was all for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please let me know what books you're excited for to read in April and what books you've read in March. And let me know if you plan on watching the Shadow and Bone um, TV show because I can definitely do some videos on it because I'm so excited for it. My boyfriend and I are huge Grishaverse fans. So I'm excited to talk about it with you guys. And yeah, have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video.